It's been several days, in fact, another weekend's passed that I'm working on this. And the la where I left off was having to take this back out and cut it down. I've got the top done, now I'm doing the back. And I've already carved this down in this area, but I noticed this area through here is a little heavy too, so I'm gonna carve all of this down. The negative of all that is that I've already got this smooth and it took forever to get it smooth. So we're gonna to have to do all that again in, the, in these areas and it's just, it's not fun, but it's gotta be done. going to do it with the Dremel tool because it's just impossible to carve. I'm an old dirt farmer I scrape a living from the soul Like my father before me Well, that's quite a bit more work. Probably doesn't look like that much, but it's going to be a lot of work to smooth it back out to get it perfect. I'm not 100% sure I'm down enough yet, but I'm pretty close. So I'll do some checking on all that and I'll finish the rest of this off camera, but I'll, if I run into anything while I'm smoothing it, I'll show you. I thought I'd just try something here. I've been using this as a scraper. It's an old blade anyway, so this is the perfect thing to try it on. I'm gonna sharpen it up as sharp as I can get it. This is just a regular uh, X-Acto blade. It's a number uh, 10. It's pretty sharp already, but I just thought I'd try sharpening it some more. I wonder, is there a way to curl that edge over? Now I've got my normal burnishing tool. I kind of think that might be a little big for this. But I'm going to just try it. I, I don't know, I'll probably break, probably break it over. Probably break the blades, what I'm saying. Well, it looks like it's burnishing it. That may have worked, I don't know. Let's see if that makes a better scraper. Well, it didn't make it any worse, I'll say that. I think it may have worked. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good with it, pretty happy with that. Yeah, I like it. There you go, there's another technique you can try. Yeah, it's even cutting this really hard wood. Man, I was having trouble getting in there and getting this to work. See, I, you know, you can sand this, but the problem is it takes forever sanding it. If you can get it, you know, pretty darn smooth with a scraper, then the sanding is still a lot, but it's a whole lot less. Wow, this is really working well. I'm, I'm glad I tried that. Oh my gosh, that's, yeah, that's exponentially better. Well, I'm gonna keep doing that. At least now I know how to improve the uh, X-Acto blade as a scraper. Oh my gosh, it's so much better. Well, it is the next day and I am sanding like crazy. I That little scraper I made out of the uh, X-Acto uh, blade worked great and it did a real nice job of getting it pretty smooth, but we're back to sanding uh, because it doesn't get it perfectly smooth. It gets it pretty good though. Much better than anything I'd tried so up to this point. But there's still a lot of sanding and I have this little rubber deal in here to help me. 
it helps me hold the sandpaper and it gives me good control of it and I can get up real close to my detail like on my flower here but I really have a lot of sanding to do it's probably gonna take me an hour or two to get this back to where it was so I'm not gonna film all that I just thought I'd show you that that is part of the process while I'm waiting for the heating iron or, or the bending iron whatever you want to refer to it as to heat up I noticed there's a little bit of a high spot in this coming around this corner here so I've got a square file to just kind of knock that down a little bit to try to get rid of that hump and make it blend better you know it's very difficult to do something like this um, this extra binding is really a lot of work especially with all the curves I will give as a tip though for anybody doing binding work and especially on something this curvy is to take a flat file and go around the edges of all your binding areas like this and the reason for that is it you, even though you did it with the um, router you'll be surprised the things that you'll clean up and and as you're doing that you'll be surprised how you'll see flat spots and things and you can and you can blend those out of there with a with a flat surface file so I'm just kind of killing a little time here perfecting this a little bit more while I'm waiting for that bending iron to heat up well, that looks better it looks more blendable now so I've got a little piece of this purfling here and you know I made this purfling this is uh, walnut um, I think it's uh, Osage orange in the middle and walnut on the outside edges and that's what I'm using to go around this on the inside of the shell all right well we're probably getting close to temperature so we're just about ready to start the actual bending again it's time to bend this little piece of purfling first I'm going to go around this first curve coming out to this body point from back here so in other words from back here around to this first point we'll see if it works we're up to about 400 degrees on the uh, heater it's actually 396 so we're getting getting close now that's Fahrenheit for the folks out there let's just see what happens here I I have a real tiny piece of tin to help me try to bend this this is going to have to be a pretty steep bend I can hear it sizzling so I know this is pretty hot I have three layers here as you can see on my bender and that allows me to get different radius bends trying to keep the water on it and trying not to put too much pressure on it too fast so that I can actually get it to bend instead of break this wood binding it, it has a force fighting against bending I mean it just does not want to bend especially when you're trying to bend something as tight as I'm trying to bend this a little bit of what it looks like so far not too much of a bend yet and I'm pulling on the metal not the wood so much the metal is what spreads the stress out if you pull on the wood I guarantee you guarantee you, you will break it if you pull on the metal you'll still break it a lot but you have a chance of making it with pulling on the metal I got it bent pretty good but unfortunately it's separated on the end here so I'm going to try to bend a little further back to get rid of some of that separation and you basically hold it there till it kind of dries and then once you do that you can see there it bent pretty well and it looks like the uh, bend's going to match what I need it to match fairly well also which is always a good thing it looks like I'm done with that bend so I'm going to set that one aside and I'm going to try to bend the next piece while I've got the iron hot now the next piece I'm going to have to start with a whole fresh new piece I want to look and see did I 
cut this piece down yet? I don't think I did. So I'm going to thin this piece down a little bit. Um, in other words, it's too wide across this way. I need it to be a little narrower. It'll just make it easier to bend, number one, and number two, uh, it'll just reduce some of the height here that I'll have to trim back later. Well, I looked there on my pile and turned out I had another piece already thinned down. I thought I did, but I just didn't see it the first time. So I'm ready to go. Good, I'll take any break I can get. And I mean any break. Any break I can get, I'll take it. I already messed up. I got a little too aggressive too fast. So I'm just going to clip off the end here and start over. Yeah, it's, it's easy to get a little too aggressive with this wood binding. In fact, you really can't get very aggressive with it at all. Especially until you get it started bending pretty good. Yeah, I got a nice, nice curve going on there. And I kind of think that's enough for what I need right now, so I'll start bending the big bend around this way. On these larger bends, I, I work on both sides of the piece because I feel like that helps stretch the wood a little bit. It's never simple. Ouch. Just touch the hot uh, iron. That's not advisable. Don't, don't do that. I would recommend you don't do that. No matter how you do it, something's going to give you a fit. Like that had to twist on me. It couldn't just do it straight. It had to twist. Hold it there till I kind of hear the steam quit steaming, then I take it off of there. I think we're good with that. I think that's all the bending I'm going to do for today. Okay, so this is the piece I just bent. And now I need to uh, kind of cut it to length. And I'm going to try to give myself a little extra. I'll cut, I'll cut a pretty good extra there so I know I've got enough and while that iron's still hot I'm gonna work on a couple of things off camera okay fitting up this piece here I'm just kind of eyeballing different things and I'll make a little mark where I think I want to cut it off at first I'm just gonna nip it off with this because it's just fast it's easy and then I'll take a sharp chisel chisel off the end real blunt and square and then I'll butt it up here to make sure that it looks like it's going to butt up without a seam and that's what it looks like already I think we're good I've got these little map pins I, I thought I'd try them this time instead of the longer pins because those long pins they bend so easy and I thought maybe these shorter map pins would uh, maybe not bend so easy. Of course, they're shorter, harder for me to handle, but I'm thinking they might work better if I can handle them. And the truth is, they're hard to handle with my sore hands. Maybe not. You know, I kind of like to use those. Uh, they're sturdier. But I'll go back to these because I'm having trouble holding on to those and getting them to do their thing. Well, some days you win and some days not so much. Right now, not so much. For some reason it's slipped out of the hole there for I don't know why but it did and I'm gonna try it again I didn't have this trouble the first time when it worked nearly perfectly and then I had to tear it out these pins are just not even sticking in this wood today there must be something going on I mean, oh my gosh yeah it's just not cooperating why is this not working I'm gonna have to Use a different strategy, you know, when you can't get something to work, you just got to change your strategy. 
All right, I've got this first little bit in there, so while it's in there, I'm going to go ahead and tack it in place, and then that way it can't move on me. All right, well that ought to lock that in place where I don't have to deal with that coming loose. And now I ought to be able to move along and make the rest of it work. Well, that was simple. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> almost. It was almost simple. All right, I'm going to cut this a little long. Start thinking about trimming it back. This came unglued, unfortunately, again. It would have been nice had that not happened, but it did. I think what I'm going to do is just make it easy on myself here and try to glue that back because that'll just make it easier to cut and everything. It, it's not like it's really create much of a problem other than when I go to trim it. Um, I, don't, I would much prefer to have it stuck back in place. So I'm going to put a little CA glue on this and then I'll clamp it with these tweezers, I think. Uh-oh. Wouldn't you know, it had to slide sideways. It couldn't just sit there. It's, oh, I just can't. You just can't win. It's like, doesn't matter what you do, something has to throw you a curve. So it had to slide sideways on me. Not Couldn't just match up flat. Uh, but I don't think it'll hurt anything. I think we're okay. We have enough material that we can trim through that. My algebra teacher... I think used to say if it was simple, monkeys could do it. I ain't never seen a monkey trying to do any of this. And I don't want to hear no comments from the peanut gallery. Like, look in the mirror! Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, right. Okie dokie, Smokey. Let's see if we can trim this up to make this sort of look like it's going to match it. The first piece that's in there is still too long. I kind of thought it was, but I just I didn't want to get too short on myself here. I think I'm going to use these again. I think I can control it better. It's still a little long probably, but it's getting better. He said farm life is dying. Son, please don't stay. Oh yeah, yeah, when it's perfect, you better just glue it. That's as perfect as I think I could get it, so I am not gonna argue with that. I thought of my father, how the crops would get in. I could hear him say, son, you should move away. He said, farm life is dying. Okay, well guess what? We're back to among the living there. I'll move on around here and try to do some more of this. I'll show you what it looks like when I get her done. Don't know how much you can see or with my thumb in the way, but I uh, don't have many options here and no more hands to try to move anything. So I'm holding this as good as I can down in there. And I'm going to get the CA glue on this, too, real quick. Very difficult to do this. It, it, there's just so many forces you can't hardly imagine. They're all pulling in a different direction. And every single thing is... Everything that's pulling is not good for what you're trying to do. It's just... It just doesn't want to cooperate. It, it's hard to explain. It almost feels like it all has its own mind going, nope, 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 nope. We're not going to do that, and we're not going to do this, and we're not going to do that. <laughs> You're going to get what you get, and too bad. 
that's kind of the way it seems like these things can think, but obviously they don't have a brain, but it sure seems like they do. Okay, the way I'm gonna do this is this inner purfling is gonna to come to a point right here, and the shell and the outer binding is gonna go through the whole thing. That's the way I'm trying to make it work. Uh, that's my vision. I may, when I get to it, go, oh, my vision wasn't very good. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's always that chance. I think it'll work, because I believe I've done it similar to this in the past. Maybe this one's a little more refined in my vision, because I've done this in the past. Anyway, that's my idea. You know what? I turned off the heating iron. And I think I may turn it back on and try to bend this one more piece. Hi, you can probably see I've started putting some more of this shell purfling back in there. Losing a piece here. These little tiny pieces. I mean, they're just little specks. And I'm trying to get them to fit on a curve. What you have to do is you have to actually file them a little bit more and you can see they're little tiny things. Perhaps you can see how tiny they are. They're only like, you know, an eighth inch long or a little bit longer than that, but not much. And you're trying to hold them and you're trying to file on them. And it's almost impossible. But if you don't do it, they don't fit up. It's like bricks around a, a circle. You, you gotta file some corners and things off, otherwise they don't line up. Anyway, that's what I'm trying to do. It's a piece by piece, little bitty, tiny, tiny pieces. I really don't know of a better way to do it. i trying everything I can think of to make it work. It just doesn't want to cooperate. It's almost impossible to hold down while you're filing it. It wants to spin every direction it can spin. There's no real little vise that you can really use. And then once you get it sort of close, it's still not easy trying to get it to fit in here and not fall. And then, if you are able to get it in there, then just like that, the glue just went nuts. Why did it do that? It went everywhere. I mean, like it literally went everywhere. You can do the same thing and, and be at a critical point. You can barely hold it and the glue won't come out. And in a place like this where, I, you know, I just could use it to just come out one little drop, it just ran out probably 10, 12 drops. Yeah, it's frustrating. Very, very, very frustrating. And every time that glue runs out like that then too, it just leaves glue residue all over everything. And then you gotta clean the glue off. I probably should just go to a different glue and then I wouldn't have the glue problem. But the thing about this glue is that it is instant. When you get it stuck, you're done, you know? It's amazing too that it can find some way to, <clears throat> to make a huge gap and not lay flat. Like right there, that's just not laying flat and I do not know why. Even if you can hold it for a second, it will only hold it a second and by the time you get the glue up there, it will have fallen some other direction. There, that looks pretty good if it would just stay there now for a few seconds while I get glue on it. It's just like working on a giant building, one tiny brick at a time, and you think you'll never get to the top, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what they think when they start. That's kind of the way this is. It's, it's almost that daunting, because you just have so much ground to cover, and, and they're just, and the pieces, like on these curvy, really curvy places, the pieces are shorter and shorter and shorter, otherwise you can't make them curve. I imagine that makes sense to you because the longer the piece is, the less it can curve. So you have to make them very short in these areas here. 
and unfortunately, nothing is really cooperating. On this piece, uh, it's still long. I'll have to cut it much shorter, but while it's long, I can file the very end and try to get the end to match up a little better. I can tell that this end's gonna have to be filed at a different angle here. And then you just have to cut them shorter and I try to let them fall in my hand like that. And after doing that, I'm not sure that one's short enough after all that. I should have made it shorter. I thought I made it pretty short. Pretty short and short enough are two different things. I mean, I could probably get by with that. I'll do a little filing on it on the edges and stuff to make it kind of a little more round. It's really hard to do. It's so hard to do. It's really hard to explain. And there's there's a slight curve to this thing, so you gotta remember which way the curve is all the time when you're filing. It's good, it's just not what I call great. It's, I wish I could just do a little better. I, it's not bad, it's just you really want the detail to be very fine and refined. And so far it's pretty good, but it's not quite as good as I'd like to see it. Wow, this is gonna be tough. I'm gonna take this little piece and make two little pieces out of it, I think. Oh my gosh. Any chance of these fitting in here as they are? Not much. And then every time you drop it, it always falls some way you don't know and, and don't want it to be. <laughs> it's so hard. And you'd think on this carpet it'd be hard to find them too, but so far, that hasn't been much of an issue, and it probably keeps them from bouncing too far. Yeah, you think making a puzzle is hard. You gotta try this. This piece here is gonna be a nightmare. It's not sitting on much, <clears throat> and it has to come to a sharp point and match up with the other one on the other side. Uh, this last little piece has got to go right in here out to a point and then it has to match up with the point on this side. <laughs> oh, couldn't I just get a rope burn instead? Okay, here's my attempt at this and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty much impossible what I'm about to try to do. But you still got to do it, you know. I'm, I'm just going to try to draw a straight line how this is. It's just not going to match up. First of all, the ends aren't matching up very good down here. Uh, and it's just like there's an in invisible something holding it away from this side. I'm sure it's glue, but you can't see it. All right, well, I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of filing here. I'm gonna to have to file under this piece and on this corner to try to get them to match up better. That almost works, but gee whiz. Trying to figure out how to make that come across there and match up. I'm just gonna take my best shot at it. and hope it cuts somewhere near correct. Kind of a mess. Well, if I ever get that piece in there, I'll show you. Because right now, it's gonna fight me. Well, I just kind of glued that piece on there and just stuck it there. I left it coming out really far. When I come back around, or when I start this other piece, I'm just gonna butt it into this and, and just make it look as good as I can butted because 
I decided the 45 thing ain't gonna work in this case. It just isn't. And after I got that piece in there, I kind of noticed that th there's a li this piece of wood right here on the top doesn't go down in there far enough. It's a little bit shallow, so I'm gonna try to sh deepen that a little bit. That's probably about as good as it's going to get. So when you're doing this kind of detail, you just kind of have to get down to the detail. And so that's what I was attempting to do there. I'm about done for the day, but I might try to get a couple of pieces started on here so that I'll have a fairly easy path here until I get up to this point. It'll be easier to start on that tomorrow than it will be this hard thing since I'm kind of in the mode for the hard thing right now. Well, my friends, I went ahead and put that first piece in there off camera. And you can see how this comes way out here way too far. And that's okay. I think what I'm going to do is just take the Dremel tool with a little, you know, diamond grinder here and try to just cut that off. I might even try with these things first. I hope this doesn't mess up. But I'll try knocking off the biggest portion of it with this. That, that knocked off some of it. Probably could have knocked off a bit more. I don't know if I can now or not though. I think I'll just do it with the grinder. I've got a 600 grit burr on this and uh, that's a diamond burr type thing, and I'm going to try to make this come out to an even point right here. Uh, yeah, good luck with that one, right? Can you see what I'm talking about? I'm going to try to make that come out. Um, yeah, we'll see. Here we go. Yeah, probably didn't have much of that in camera because I was concentrating, but that looks pretty darn good right now. I got my doubts whether that's going to work, I gotta be honest. Doesn't look like it's gonna mesh up with the binding very well. I don't know why exactly. I don't think it's gonna work, honestly. I, I mean, it looks nice, but I don't think it's gonna work with the binding. I may have to tear that back out and redo this whole little section right in here. I really don't know. It's, uh, boy. If I was guessing right now, I'd say that's not gonna, not gonna work, but at least you saw what I tried to do. Well, another day has dawned here in the old workshop working on this mandolin. You know, it's really difficult putting this shell around here for a gazillion reasons. I mean, you know, you gotta make the ends try to match up as good as possible to, so you don't have a bunch of big gaps. And when you start going around a place like this, the purfling, purfling is straight up and down, but the angle of this is slanted so if I slant these pieces then there's a gap at the top between the purfling and this and if I if I keep the pieces uh, perpendicular then I'm afraid you know first of all there's going to be an air gap underneath them under here I mean it's just not simple it they don't match up perfectly so I just kind of split the difference do the best I can it's uh, it's not easy at all Almost every single piece just fights you. And every little tiny piece has to be hand fit. You know, people say I have a lot of patience. Well, this will try your patience. I can tell you that for sure. I don't think it's patience as much as it is determination. I am absolutely determined to finish this and get this done. And I will get it done, but it's, it's not simple at all and then like little pieces of glue get in your way and keep it for, so you have to get in there and clean out the glue it's it's a complicated little mess here it's <laughs> it's just unbelievably hard and unbelievably complicated you always stand the risk of dropping a little piece on the floor and I keep the floor swept really good around here in case that happens because it's really a pain when you worked on a piece and got it just right and then you drop it which I do quite a bit and I do more now than I used to I drop everything it seems like anymore and trying to get the glue on it too is just a nightmare because the glue runs it just doesn't do what you want it to do and right there the glue ran under my hand instead of ah, that I didn't think it did that time I but it did, and it messed up the piece, so I gotta take it back out. It, 
it glued the piece in at an angle instead of gluing it down there where it should have been. Oh, it just is really, it's just nightmarish. It really is. It's not fun at all, and I'll be so thankful when this is done. I'll be glad that I did it because it's going to look beautiful, but boy, I'll be so glad when I'm done with this. That failed attempt put more glue in there, so I got to get the glue back out. There's really no way you can say, yeah, use wax paper, do this, do that, you know, gloves. Yeah, yeah, try it. That's all I can say. With all the detail here, it's really hard to do it without using your hands. It's just hard. And when you put paper or something else in there, it just adds to the complexity. I'm hoping I can sand through the differences in the shape and the bevel and honestly it's going to be a, a real nightmare trying to make that flush out. It, it may not work. I may have to end up cutting it out of there and doing it all over again. Uh, in fact, I think because of that, I think I'm just going to go ahead and try to contour this whole section right here next and make sure that it is working because I'm just not sure it is. So I think I'll try the little grinder. I've got a 150 diamond burr here, 150 grit. And I'm gonna try to clean this up. I'll, of course, I'll have to put on my respirator for this. about this it's uh, pretty good you know it's gonna probably be sufficient uh, it's difficult to say a hundred percent yet but I think it'll sand out and look okay it's uh, it's really difficult making all these different angles come out and work with a bind a fixed size binding but I think it will work well several hours later you can see I've got the abalone shell all the way from here up around here and from here around to here. So I've just got to connect these two points just right outside the circle here. This circle will get covered with a large piece of abalone. At least that's my vision. Wow. I got maybe five or six more pieces to go. Can I make it? I hope so. Fitting in these last few pieces, look how tiny that little piece is. I mean, it's so tiny, you know, it's just a little tiny piece. And I'm actually holding it down with my finger like this, and I'm actually getting in here and filing the end and beveling it to match up with the other piece that's already there. And the question is, does it match? That's the question. And then you've got to try to fit it in here. And that's not easy either. Doing all that with my left hand is very difficult. But trying to hold this with my left hand would even be more difficult. So now I've got to make these two pieces come out to a point right about in here somewhere. I'll show you what that looks like if I ever make that happen. Well, there's what she looks like in finished form, at least in terms of the purfling. Obviously, I haven't finished the outer binding yet. And when I say finished form, that's like 80%. I mean, I still have to smooth and clean up and lots of little detail-y things yet, but at least the shell work is there. So now, I can move on to binding and cleaning it up and making it look much better yet. And before long, I'll be working on the fingerboard and the peg head. And then we'll have this thing finished. Yeah, yeah.